to his sister. She's my girl now. I'm not going to be able to stand. Sunday, October 29th, 2023. This is my secret prayer today. Lord, if you don't help me, I'm not going to be able to stand. I whispered that as I wobbled up here to the pulpit. This 29th day of October is homecoming weekend for the black folks of Linden, Alabama. Our people come from around the country and assemble here in Linden for a weekend of festivities and celebration. People meeting and greeting. Many have not seen each other for decades and years. But our people who have been properly programmed return home on Thanksgiving. And my cousin, Sam Adams and I made a tour across the athletic field where there were 40 or 50 different groups organized by the year of graduation from the school. And we checked out every class. But I have some solemn news and information for all who attended this homecoming weekend. It is this. Everybody that you see at the homecoming You're not going to see them at the home going, the great heavenly home going in the sky. So, fellow classmates and friends, I admonish us all to so live, so organize our lives, so establish our priorities such that we can meet again at the great heavenly home gathering. It'll be a wonderful time. John the Revelator gave us a, a little vision of it. He said they were coming from the east, they were coming from the west, coming from the north, coming from the south, a number that no man could number. All nations, kindreds, and people. Whew. I just want to be in the number. <laughs> Message today. You're going to be brief. I'm going to try to give you the first installment. And I'll just kind of like label this message. The homecoming series, and I may stretch it out over two or three Sundays, but I know that I can't get all of it into today's message, so I'm just going to like scratch the surface, and there's a scripture that I want to use for this homecoming message. And it's a scripture that focuses on the righteous and the wicked. Two groups. That scripture is recorded in the first number of the Psalms, which says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, 
Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That word blessed means happy. Last week I preached about happiness and the our, uh, insights into happiness. Bible keys to happiness. But when you see this word blessed in the Bible, you can safely translate that word to mean happy. Happy is the man. That's women too. Happy is the woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. My friend, there is evil counsel out there in this world. Truth says, fortune tellers, palm readers, or uh, astrologers, and a host of others that give out evil counsel. If you want to be happy, you stay away from evil counsel. Ah, uh, we are not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Got evil advice and evil associations. And when I say evil associations, I'm not talking about groups. I'm talking about evil acquaintances. Ha. Walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. There's a lot of ungodly advice being fed to our people. But the psalmist goes on to say, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And this is where my text began. In verse 2, it says, uh, His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Now some of the people that came home were in their season, in their season of prosperity, in their season of joy, in their season of happiness, in their season of fulfillment, in their fruit-bearing season. Some in Chicago and New York and Detroit, Boston, were not able to come this year. Just was it their season? Ha, I look to see them next year. Ah. Uh, Whatever season you're in, it is a season that is foreordained. If God would, he could, but he doesn't in most cases. But if God could roll back the curtain of the future, and show you what was in store for you, and show you your season, huh, my friend, I don't think you'll be able to handle it. Now, there's a promise, a law, a command, and a reward embedded in this text. The command is avoid evil advice. Don't take it. Avoid evil people, acquaintances. Don't fool around with them. Huh. The other law is 
stay in the word, the law of the Lord, night and day. That is possible. And here come the reward. You're going to be well established. You're going to be like that tree planted by the rivers of water, bringing forth your fruit, not in your neighbor's season, but bringing forth your fruit in your season. And your leaf, the product of your life, your offsprings, your fruit, shall not will. And the reward, whatsoever you do it, shall prosper. Who, who wouldn't serve a God like that? That would do all of these things. Let me ask you, do you sometimes wonder if you, well, let me ask you, go back to the first question. Do you sometimes feel uh, that the place in life you occupy is really where God wants you to be? Do you think you're in the right place? Do you wonder if you perhaps have, have hidden talents, hidden abilities that would fit you for bigger and better things? Uh, fit you for more satisfaction and happiness than you have right now? Do you feel hindered all oh, my classmates do you feel hindered in your work not appreciated by others feel like you're facing a dead end let's get this thing right well if you have ever had thoughts of this kind right here in today's message is light, light which may shine upon a wonderful new road upon which you may have never traveled. That wonderful light is this truth. The truth that God wants you to have the right work God wants you to be happy in that work. That's the truth. That's the light. In everyone's life, God has lit a candle. And the light of God's candle shines brightest on some single thing which is Your life work, that one single thing upon which God light shines brightest is your own life work. Think about it. Uh, for every 10 people who are in the wrong kind of work and are discouraged, they are, they are, there are thousands of people who are in the right kind of life work. What about you today? There are a thousand kinds of people who are in the right life work but are unhappy because they yearn for the wrong kind of work. 
Yes. There may be times when you think the doors of opportunity are closed upon you. But time after time, time after time, when God closes a door upon one kind of work, You know what I'm getting ready to say. It's only to open up the door to another kind of work. When you come home for the next year homecoming, you could well be in a different line of work. I'm going to submit this to you and Try to get out of your way. 16 minutes are gone. And I'm sure I will not go 20 minutes today. But I want to close out by saying to you that there's only one test of whether you are in God's life work. And the test is this. Are you happy at that work? My friend, you know, God wants you to whistle, dance, hum and sing while you work. And if you're happy, <laughs> you can do it. And in many cases, my friend, the only thing that holds you back, the thing which makes your work seem dull and makes you seem like you're in a rut, the thing which keeps you from your just rewards is this, your own attitude toward your work. Receive the promise that whatever you do will prosper. Receive the recipe for happiness, for blessedness. Blessed is a man, a woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, for his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate, who day and night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringeth forth his fruit in his season. The ungodly, those that will not make it in, the ungodly, shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. I want you to know today, my friend, that the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. Whew. Let me put it in a nutshell and tell you this, what I'm trying to drive home, this message about God's life work for you, first off, is the contrast between saints and sinners. That key of happiness is identified with the word blessed. By all means, by any means, shun evil companions. Bad language, disdain. Seek not the counsel of the 
wicked and evil people. And come on out from among them and be ye separate. Thus saith the Lord. Just in case I fail to submit the subject, the outset of this message, it will be in the description section of the message, but my subject in this message has been God has a life work for you. Part one. Have you found that work? Do you hum a tune while you're working? That's a good sign that you have the work. You have the life work that God prepared you for. Just in case you have heard too much evil counsel, just in case you have evil acquaintances latched on to your social network, some that you know that you need to unfriend and shun and put away. This is how you go about doing it. Under the laws of God, go to him with a committed prayer telling him, Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. And I'm sorry for all the wrongs that I have done. And I believe that Jesus died to forgive me of my sins. And I just want to thank you for the second chance that you give in the Bible. I thank you for the new life, the new eternal life, the new free gift of eternal life that I will enjoy in Jesus. From this day forward, I choose to follow you in Jesus' name. I got to go, 22 minutes gone. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, my friend, unto him who's able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. Whew. Jesus is able to do it. Wipe out our sins, give us a new lease on life, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, recreating us a new and a clean heart. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. This message is delivered by Albert Franklin Langster inside the Sanctuary Recording Studio of the New Greater New Bethel Baptist Church of Linden, Alabama. I did not write this message. I don't know who wrote it, and I don't think that anybody else living can tell you who wrote it. My job is to deliver it. God bless you. God keep you, my friend. Till we meet again in the 2024 homecoming. If we don't meet in the heavenly skies before, goodbye.